yours, mister? Clean stalls, plenty of oats and water, dollar a day. You got yourself a customer. It's always this hot around here? It ain't but 98 in the shade. You want to see it get hot, wait till Friday. It'll get hot then. A whole lot hotter. Take care of my horse, will you? for one? Yep. Yeah, just signed a book. You're a stranger in these parts. That's right. Here for cattle buying? Yeah, looking first, then buying. Well, we got the finest ones here. Pure bred beefs. We're famous for them. Prove your herd or build them from scratch. We got them. Well, now, I guess you want to freshen up and start to those ranches and look at those cattle, right? Yeah, I like plenty of hot water for washing. Mr. Cartwright, here's your key. You take your drunks pretty serious around here, don't you? Oh, he's not drunk. Now your room is 25, top of the landing to the right. If he's not drunk, what's the matter with him? I wouldn't concern myself if I were you, Mr. Cartwright. He's beyond help. This man's a dying man. Name is Stephen Friday. Black Friday. Steve Friday, sure. I wouldn't, Mr. Cartwright. Well, I would. Hey. You're cutting in to do another man's work, boy. For the time being, anyway. me, Joe. Joe Cartwright. Yeah. I remember. But what are you doing here? You're in no condition to be down here. Let me get you upstairs in bed. You mean in my grave, don't you? Now, don't try and trick me. Because I'll kill you. Just like the others, I'll kill you. Clearing your head, boy. I got a special reservation in on Mr. Friday. In fact, three days from now. Friday the 13th. The only one this year. Right, Judge? It's poetic justice that he should die on that day. And quite fitting that he should crawl until then. Now, don't you forget. Friday's all mine.
I just want to help you, that's all. Leave me alone. It's a heck of a way to talk to an old friend. Friend? Maybe. But that was when I worked on the Ponderosa. A long time ago. Things change. Yeah, I could have guessed that without you telling me. Got a lot of fever. How long have you been sick? Gotta keep that filled. I'll get you some more. How about something to eat, too? Feeling sorry for me can get you killed. I'll be back. Don't bother. I don't need you. I don't need anybody. See if I can get you that. Hey, let me have a bowl of soup, a couple of biscuits, and some tea on a tray, please. Si, senor. Oh, wait a minute, Tony. I'm sorry, Mr. Cartwright, but you've got to eat that food down here like everybody else. Look, you've got a sick man upstairs. Well, I know. Well, come on, why don't you forget the whole thing and have a drink on the house, huh? Where can I find a doctor? I don't recollect. Thanks. <sighs> Judge, how long are you going to let him get in the way? I hired you to spill only one man's blood, the man that murdered my son. Do you really think Friday's going to come out and face me? When Stephen Friday makes a date for a gunfight, he comes out regardless of how he feels. Especially on his name day. But play safe. We'll starve him a little and goad him a little. Instead of being impatient, you should thank me for making it easy for you to earn your fee. Hold on, the patient will live long enough for me to get my coat on. What did you say his name was? I just don't like leaving him alone too long, that's all. Yeah, that's the second time you dodged my question. Well, what difference does it make what the man's name is? It does if it's Stephen Friday. Look, you've got a sick man over in the hotel. You're the only doctor in this town. You gonna let him stay sick? Listen, young fellow. There's a certain amount of risk just living in a trail town like Chiso. Now, I'd be willing to stretch that risk even thinner for a man with, say, the average amount of good and bad in him. But Black Friday... It gives you the right to judge the good and bad in a man. Well, uh, I'll get you some medication. You, uh... You get my point, don't you? Why, I'd... I'd face a contagious disease without hesitation, but... But this. You know, my father once said that fear and hate are the two most contagious diseases known to man. That's all right. Give him a half a powder every two hours. Use some cool compresses. See that he takes some nourishment, solid food, if he can hold it down. The fever should drop within 48 hours. It's, uh, it's pointless, you know. They'll kill him before the week's out. Thanks for the medicine. Just a 
medicine. I got fancier pictures in my room. Now, you told me you were going for water. I forgot. Yeah, the fever will do that to a man. You can get yourself killed that way. Yeah. Just take one of these every two hours. I'll be on your feet in a couple of days. Drink it. Water, medicine, why do you bother? Dora ask you to? No. no. I haven't seen Dora since you two left Virginia City. No. She wouldn't ask you to. Even if she knew. That's all finished. There's a lot of roads. A lot of towns since Virginia City. But you heard about me. Sixteen men. You had to hear about me. Yeah, I heard about you. First, I didn't believe it. I never thought I'd hear you talk about it like you were proud. You were proud? The way you gentle horses. Handle stock. All I got to be proud is what I can do with this. Didn't used to be that way. That first time, first one in Virginia City, I heard that wasn't your fault. You were suckered into it. Yeah, yeah. Money gun. Drunk, trying to build himself a reputation. He picked on me for an easy score. I was more surprised than he was that it turned out the other way around. Why'd you run away? I guess I just figured I should move on. I went on down the road. <laughs> Another optimist waiting around the bend for me. Come on. Let's get you in bed. No, I'm all right. Yeah, you're great. I've seen kittens in better shape than yours. Let's give that medicine a chance to work. It doesn't matter. End of the week, I'll be fine. Let's get you in bed anyway. Friday the 13th, huh? And it's the day they picked. My name day. Day I fight Nate Jakes. Yeah, if you're able. Able or not, I fight him. You sound like a man who wants to die. A man who's got no choice. We'll talk about that Friday. Right now, you need some solid food. Joe, you're not careful. You're liable to get killed instead of me. Don't come back. Mr. Willett? Thanks, Tony. Rare. It better be. Oh, Mr. Cartwright. Another steak, Tony. I'm Josh Willett. Known around here as uh, the judge. I know your father by reputation. Fine man. A fine ranch, the Ponderosa. I uh, presume you're here to buy cattle? Yeah, that was a general idea. Well, sit down, Mr. Cartwright. I uh, hope you don't mind my uh, ordering you a steak. An apology for not welcoming you to Chisto before now. Uh, uh, this is Mr. Jakes, an associate of mine. Well, you may have heard of him. Yeah, Nate Jakes, I've heard of him. As owner of the largest ranch in these parts, well, not as big as the Ponderosa, but a fair spread, I can be of considerable help to you. If you don't find what you want in my herds, I'll see that you do on one of the other ranches at the right price. Now, that's what I call a right generous offer. After you've eaten your steak, I'll have one of my men take you out to my ranch. Plenty of room. We can put you up. After maybe Saturday or Sunday, huh? Well, 
It will take at least two days to look over my herds. Mr. Willard, you can talk plainer than that. Why don't you say what you mean? Why not? There's an old rule that says a wise man does not intrude in matters that don't concern him. I think you should heed it, Mr. Cartwright. Now, you got a sick man upstairs, all of you down here. And you're going to give me a good price on some cattle if I leave town for a couple of days. You know, Judge, he catches on real quick. Oh, thank you. That's a good-looking steak. How much? A dollar and a half, but that's my pleasure. I always buy my own dinner. Looks like I'm going to be collecting another fee. <laughs> There's just nothing I can do, Mr. Cartwright. Stephen Friday's sick. He's not beat up or shot. Nobody's laid a hand on him. But he him. can't get out of the hotel, and the day after tomorrow, I'll they're going to kill him. it. I can only concern myself with what's happening right now. Come on, Sheriff, come on. You're dodging the issue. No, I think you're the one that's dodging. You're dodging the fact that Friday has already gunned down 16 men. All right, then arrest him. Arrest him and get him out of the hotel. He's not on any wanted posters. He never has been. He doesn't operate that way. No, all of his kills have been called fair fights. Oh, and you know they weren't fair, huh? Well, now, are you one of those people who thinks that gunslingers are exciting and romantic? I think he's a human being. You just said he wasn't wanted by the law. All right. Let's look at the facts. Friday rides in here almost a week ago. Old people are chasing him, but he wants to stay right here of his own free will. Well, now, right away, I figure him just being here is trouble. And, mister, I was right. Willett rides in. Nate Jakes rides in. Within 12 hours. Another fact. He lies up there and he gets sick. Well, now, you know how word travels. There's a few other fellas that'd like to be in on his killing. So they start to gather, just in case Friday outdraws Jake's. Now, at last count, there were two of them. I met Willard. Who's the other ones? Enos Lowe. Lowe's little brother wasn't fast enough to take Friday. Now, Lowe is no gunman, but, oh, he is a wizard with a rifle. And then there's Cole Berry. He's no more than a kid, but he's fast, and he'd like to build a reputation. Three or four. The tough odds on a well man. Oh, there's a couple of local boys who'd like to be in on that killing, too. And some of our more respectable citizens, why, they can just hardly wait for Friday the 13th. You see, Mr. Cartwright, when gunfighters start to cut each other down, honest folks benefit. So you sentenced him to death without a trial? Oh, that wasn't me. That was Judge Willett. And folks around here think that he did right. Now, Mr. Cartwright, why don't you forget about Stephen Friday? He's not worth your worry. Not to mention your life. Just doing what I was told, mister. Well, you were told wrong. I'm not ready to leave town just yet. Take him back to the stable. Oh, Mr. Cartwright, uh, the man who had your room showed up, so I gave it to him. And uh, since there's no other room in the house... I'll move in with Mr. Friday. Maybe you'd like to know it's time for breakfast. Yeah, steak and eggs and grits and biscuits. And lots of hot coffee to wash it down. That is, for them that can uh, get served. <laughs> <laughs> Good 
right there, friends, isn't it? How are you feeling this morning? Hmm. Uh, it's too early to tell. You planning on a party? Why, well, don't you believe in shaving? Not when I might have to drink that same water. Hey, well, don't you worry about the water. You got plenty of it right outside in that fountain in the middle of the street. Yeah, so your medicine there. It's the last of it. Drink up. I'll go get us some more water and you can wash up. We'll go down and get some meat. <laughs> you, uh, you think they're going to serve you, huh? Sure, they're going to serve me. Served me last night. Did they? How come you didn't bring me anything? We had plenty of steak left over there. Didn't think you were hungry, that's all. Here, drink some water. This water's good for the fever. There you go. I'll get this one filled up. How would you like your eggs? Sunny side up. Gotcha. Morning, Mr. Cartwright. Another hot day. Cartwright? Are your, your breakfast waiting? We went through that yesterday. I know. And I misjudged you badly. I've ordered a tray prepared for Mr. Friday. In return, I only ask that you listen to me for a few moments. Want the pitcher filled with water? Oh, sure. Get him some water. Please. Do you know who you're risking your life for? Do you know what he is? Yeah, I think I do. I don't mean statistics. 16 men killed in gunfights. There's no blood or pain in numbers. I mean specifics, Mr. Cartwright, such as a boy named Billy Willett. An 18 year old boy walks into a saloon. Someone gives him whiskey. His head spins until he doesn't know what he's doing. A professional gunman sees him taunts him and cuts him down. That's who you're helping. I'm sorry about your son, Mr. Willett. But if it happened like you said, then why didn't the law do something about it? The law was blind. The law said it was a fair fight five years ago, and he's gone on killing ever since, and still the law does nothing. So now, I'm doing the law's job, Mr. Cartwright. A fair fight. All legal. And you can call it fair and legal to hire a gunman to kill a sick man. Mr. Friday's breakfast. The last meal either of you will get in this town. And the last water. I don't want you to be hurt. I don't want anyone hurt but Stephen Friday. But get between Friday and his retribution. And you'll get a herd. Let you bring this up here? Yeah. How come? Is it poison? No, he just wanted to talk. Wanted me to listen. Oh, yeah. That 18 year old boy I butchered. That helpless boy who took a drink and didn't know up from down. I heard how he tells it. And how do you tell it? I don't. Then it happened the way Willett said, huh? Oh, come on. What's the use in talking about it? His side, my side, the boy's dead. I want to hear you tell it. All 
Right. Billy Willett was 18, but he was no boy. He'd killed two cowhands by the time he decided I'd be number three. He came up on me from behind. He had his gun half out of his holster. Then he yelled. His bullet burned my side. It was the closest I ever came. Are you happy? Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I should have known. Everybody should know. Everybody should know. Everybody should know about the wife who keeps begging you to stop. And you keep telling her you can't stop because the guns keep coming up against you. And inside you know you can't stop. And after the 10th or the 12th, she knows it too. And she leaves. And your whole world goes out that door with her. The doc's been called out of town. He won't be back till tomorrow afternoon. Friday afternoon. He went out to the Willits Ranch. The judge asked me to tell you that. Oh, so you work for Willa, too? No, not yet. Jake's has a bigger reputation, so Willett hired him. But I'll get my chance. Oh, what do you have against Friday? Oh, not a thing. First time I ever saw him was yesterday afternoon when he almost fell down the stairs in the hotel. You don't even know him and you still want to kill him? Yeah, the place to start is at the top. When I get him, I get his reputation, everything that goes with it. The gun jobs and the money. You kill a man you never even spoke to just for that, for the money. And I'll get it, too, because Jake's isn't fast enough. That's why I'm hanging around, running errands. When Friday gets Jake's, I'll get Friday and all the money Jake's would have got. If it turns out the other way, same difference. I'll take Jake's and I still got it all. Howdy, Mr. Cartwright. You want your horse, I'll have Charlie saddle it up for you. One horse. That's all you take. No, I don't want the horse saddle. Just came over to check him. It's a hot day. I want to make sure he's getting plenty of water. It's already been taken care of. We wouldn't let no horse go without water. Thank Judge Willett. Willett's got nothing to do with it. It's my idea. You want your horse, you can have it any time up till sundown. After that, nobody leaves. Uh, you got a real brave town here. All of you against one sick man. Still sick, huh? Glad to hear it. You know, my brother had been in the saddle for 30 hours. Out on his feet when Friday gunned him down. It's uh, kind of fitting the way things are working out. You might think so. And uh, don't try sneaking out the back door of the hotel. Somebody's always watching. I'm sure of that. I know you want it to happen tomorrow, Judge, but I think you're making a big mistake. Cartwright came down here to buy cattle, didn't he? Then he sees Friday and all Shut of us... Shut up. If anything proves I'm right, that does. We can't talk anymore when he's around. Look, Judge, first he moves in with Friday. That makes two of them. Now, that don't bother me. I beat those kind of odds before. Then what's the problem? Like I said, Cartwright come here to buy cattle. He's not going to... He's not going to hit the trail alone. He's got drovers following him in. And if he does have? If he does have six, eight, ten drovers, it's a small army. I say, do it now. Impossible. Friday will not come out of that room until tomorrow noon. You know that, and I know it. Then I'll go in after him, with Cartwright in the room or out. It's all one to me. That would be shooting a sick man in his bed. 
A clear case of murder. And that I will not have. When he sees me, he'll draw. Don't worry, you'll get your fair fight. Without witnesses? And open to question? No. Maybe Jakes doesn't want to give Friday another day to get well, Judge. Maybe that's what's bothering him. If you don't want the job, I'll take it. Sonny, if you don't stop trying to cut in, I promise. I'll take you first. Well, now you can try, Jakes. I told you I hired Jakes. And I told you why. I want to hear no more from you. I want Stephen Friday's death. Legal beyond all doubt. I want him killed on the anniversary of my son's death. At noon on Friday the 13th. Shadow's still out there? Yeah. Yeah, he's still out there. All in a slow. Couldn't hit himself with a six gun. With that carving, he'll hit anything he can see. Yeah, so I've heard. Yeah, your head's burning up, your fever's going up again. And doctor said cold compresses is some great cold, but it's better than nothing. My throat's dry. Can you give me some water? Yeah. Here's a little bit. I'll get you some more. Keeping you busy? Cartwright's giving him all that food and medicine and getting water for him, making a well man out of him. This keeps on and Friday's gonna be more than you can handle, Jakes. The judge said no water. You should have listened to him, Cartwright, because your luck just ran out. I'm calling you. I guess maybe you're in the market for a new gun hand. I thought you would be. $1,500. Same thing I offered him. 
You got yourself a new man. What's the matter, Joe? Don't feel so good? Just had to kill a man. I told you to stay out of it. You know, I didn't have much choice, did I? You know how many times I've said that? Yeah, well, it's gonna have to get himself a new gun. At least that'll buy us some time. He don't need much time. He's got a lion waiting outside. Yeah, I talked to that kid at the doc's office yesterday. Barry? Yeah, he would be the first in line. He said he didn't even know you. But he wants to kill me. You find that hard to understand, don't you? I don't. I understand it very well. That Barry kid out there showing off. <laughs> That's probably a little more than that. Uh, gunfighters sometimes send their reputations down the road ahead of them to to scare the man they're going to meet. Barry doesn't have a reputation, so he probably wants to show me what he can do. But one thing he can't show me is what he does when the target shoots back. You know, when we didn't have any, all I could think about was water. Now that we've got it, my thirst is gone. You're in no shape to go out there. In 30 minutes, we'll know. say what's on your mind came to ask for a little mercy for Friday mercy mr. Cartwright for a man who doesn't know the meaning of the word I can't help you you chose to involve yourself with a man who's about to be killed legally did you say killed legally at noon today the fifth anniversary of my son's murder now, tell me just what kind of killing is legal, Mr. Willett. Out a hanging? Yes, but only after a man has been tried in a courtroom. Convicted and sentenced. Now, I don't see any courtroom here, no judge, no jury. All I see is an armed mob waiting to force a sick man out into the street so he can be murdered. And you're gonna call that legal? I'm taking advantage of the loophole in the law that Friday has used in all his killings. At noon, Stephen Friday comes out of that room to meet Mr. Barry. A face-to-face -face shootout in the street. A fair fight. That kind of killing is legal, Mr. Cartwright. Your son was killed in a face-to-face -face shootout, Mr. Willett, and you call that one murder. If your boy had been a tenth of a second faster, that could be him up in the room right now instead of Friday. Or don't you like to think about that? There'd been enough talk.
Everything fair and legal. You still have a few minutes. If you want to say goodbye to your friend. What are you trying to prove? All right, you got a kid out on the street who's trying to build himself a reputation. Don't give him a chance to do it. What do you suggest I do? All you manage was to lose your gun. I say stay in the room. Don't go out there. Till I starve or they burn me out? Now, my father gets you with some men. We'll get you out of here. Then what? I go to another town where other Judge Willits and Cole Berries are waiting for me. Five minutes to twelve. Got another gun? Yeah. There's one in the drawer. When you go out there, I'm going with you. Thanks, Joe. Top man. I got his reputation! I got it all! Last town. The end of the road. What you wanted. You got him, you got your reputation. You got your revenge. All of you all got just what you wanted, didn't you?
killing a man with an empty gun. 